Hi folks, this is Color and Chemist. My name is Connie and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I thought that I would do a little bit of a different type of video today. There's a saying in uh, when, when, you know, writers are writing novels or thinking about writing short stories, anything like that. And the advice is to write about what you know. So I thought I would take that advice and apply it to this video, my channel. If you remember from a previous video or a few previous videos, I think I mention it fairly often. I'm a chemistry teacher and chemistry is what I know. So I thought, well, there is chemistry in art. There's definitely chemistry in art. There's lots of it. So I thought that I would create this, this video to help people to know, well, let's, let's take a look right there, that word. Some of these words can be very scary and they seem really weird. And, and you might be looking at them thinking, why on earth would they name a color, you know, that word? Those words, some of those really, you know, crazy looking words that you see, particularly in artist grade pencils or, or um, maybe markers, those are the chemical words for either the pigment or the family name, the pigment family. So I thought, well, I know chemistry, you know, maybe people might be interested in a video that sort of helps, helps you to know how to pronounce those words because they can be super crazy. And I hope everybody isn't thinking at this point, oh, chemistry. <laughs> I love chemistry. I do. And, you know, I understand most people's reaction, but I hope that these videos aren't scary. I hope that, because I do, I hope to actually make more. Uh, I can look at the chemistry of, you know, a bunch of different aspects of coloring and art. So I hope that they're not scary. I hope that you find them, you know, informative, maybe even a little interesting. <laughs> Who knows? Let me know in the comments below what you think and if I should make more of them. And, you know, we can kind of go from there. So I'm starting with Karen Dash. I'll probably take a look at maybe some Faber-Castell polychromos names as well. Now, not all of the names for these colors are, you know, chemical names. Obviously, lemon yellow, that's, everybody's fine with that. Uh, cadmium, see in the second one here, that's something that, you know, most people are okay pronouncing. The middle word here is bismuth. So the S is kind of pronounced like a, a Z, Z, sorry, Z, we say Z in Canada. So it's golden bismuth yellow. That's how you would say that one. I'm just going to slide my swatch book down here. I don't think, well, so we've got orange, dark cadmium orange, that's fine. This is cornelian, and that is, uh, it's a semi-precious gemstone, actually. So a little bit of geology in there, too. Lots and lots of pigments come from rocks. <laughs> well, not so much rocks, minerals, actually. Um, earth, sometimes. There are also some of the truly crazy names that we'll see in here. Those are synthetic pigments or pigment families. Um, so yeah, we're, we're, we're getting pigments in our art and in our coloring, both from natural sources and also from synthetic or, you know, made in a lab, made in a factory kind of sources. Uh, permanent red, scarlet, you guys are okay with those. Here we've got a crazy one. So this is anthroquinone carmine. That's how you say that, anthroquinone carmine. And I would love to go into all of these different pigments in, in you know, now, but I think this video will just, will focus on pronouncing and in, in future videos, maybe I can go into the different families and, and talk more about them. So this is perline brown. So that's, that's another, um, chemical uh, family of, of pigments, perline. Carmine, I think everybody's sort of good with that one. Carmine Lake. Go back over here. Hopefully I'm not making anyone too ill. This is just a fun one to say. So back in the reds there, we had anthroquinone. So this is anthroquinoid. They're related, obviously. Just a slight difference on the end there. So anthroquinoid pink. This one is crimson alizarin. So like lizard, alizarin hue. That's how you say that one. 
and then purplish red, fine with that. Crimson aubergine. Aubergine is, I believe it's kind of a, a UK um, word for eggplant. Ultramarine, I think everybody's okay with that word. This next one here, I, I it gets shortened a lot to quin, right? Quin colors, but that's quinacridone purple. And you can have a bunch of different quinacridones. You can have quinacridone um, blue, purple. So that's, again, that's, that's a family. Violet gray, violet brown, those are fine. Notice gray is spelt with an E. That is, that's a Canadian spelling. It's maybe also UK, maybe European too. I'm not sure. I know in the States, um, you guys spell it G-R-A-Y. Here in Canada, it's G-R-E-Y. Of course, we also have, you notice the spelling of color up here. This chart came from Color with Claire, and she's, of course, in the UK, and so she spells color, O-U-R. We do in Canada, too. Ultramarine, I think everybody's okay with that word. Manganese, probably most people are okay with that word, too. Manganese is an element, um, just like bismuth was an element. So those are elements on the periodic table. This one is interesting, a little bit of history there. Now, oh my goodness, this is French. So I did take some French in school, but my French, French pronunciation isn't great. So please forgive me if I, if I sort of make this not, if I don't pronounce it well. It's bleu de Nîmes. So Nîmes is, uh, I believe it's a town in France. And it was actually the birthplace of, or the where um, denim was developed. Now, de in French means of. So, of Nîmes. But if you cover up the E-S, what do you get? You get D-E-N-I-M. Denim. So, this bleu de Nîmes, I'm assuming, is sort of Karen Dash um, saying this is denim blue. So... I thought that was kind of interesting. So we'll go back over here. Ooh. So again, ultramarine is fine. Okay, this is a super fun one to say. You don't often see words that start with P-H-T-H. -H. Not, not in sort of everyday language, do you? You do in chemistry. There, there are a number of them. And a PH in, in English is usually a, an F sound, right? Think about the word phone, right? A TH in English, that's the, you, you sort of stick your tongue out between your teeth. It's th, right? So thunk, that kind of a sound. What you're going to do to say this word is when you make the F sound in English, you sort of put your top teeth on your bottom lip. If you sort of go to say the word phone, but stop before you say it, you'll notice that your, your top front teeth kind of rest on your bottom lip. So you want to sort of do that. Make like you're going to say a word that starts with F, and then just barely say the F and go right into the TH. So here's how you're going to say this word. Thalocyanine blue. So I kind of exaggerated, exaggerated the beginning there a bit. So thalocyanine blue. So you sort of say the pH, but just a hint of it. So phylocyanine blue. That's how you would say that. And once you get it, it's just fun to say. <laughs> um, in chemistry, there is a chemical that, and you might even remember this maybe from your school days, and it will turn bright pink if you put it in something like um, well, in chemistry, we call it a base. So acids and bases. So something like drain cleaner. Uh, if you put this, this chemical in, in a, in a base, it will turn bright pink and it's called phenothaline. Phenothaline. So kind of that same kind of phthalene at the, in the middle of the word there. So anyway, this is thalocyanine. Prussian blue. That's okay. This one here is indanthrone blue. So indanthrone, that one's not too bad. And then we've got a bunch that you're probably okay with. Dark indigo, we've got some cobalts here. Cobalt again is an element, but that's, that's pretty easy to say. 
over into the green blues here. I love this color. That's such a pretty color. And it's pronounced chrysocola, chrysocola blue. Ah, the rest of these you guys are probably okay with. Turquoise blue, and then we've just got some light blues. I love this gray blue as well. I really love those kind of grayed out tertiary colors. Those are some of my favorites. So we'll slide back over here. Kind of move this up a bit. So here we've got that middle word there. It's got a CH in the middle, which you'd think would be like the CH sound, but in chemistry, in this word anyway, it's not. It's a K sound. So this is malachite green. Malachite green. And malachite is a mineral that has copper in it. And if anyone has ever had any kind of copper, you know, like a copper ornament outside in your garden or on your lawn, if you leave copper outside and it's not got a coating on it, it goes kind of that really pretty... Uh, it gets kind of that green coating on it and that green coating actually if we go over here <laughs> is called verdigris and so copper even though copper is obviously it's like it's like a bright reddish color that coating that it gets on it is kind of a greeny color and malachite is a mineral that has this this copper ion actually is what it is in the mineral and so that's why it's kind of a greeny color the mineral malachite even though it's got copper you'd think it would be red but it's not and then we've got beryl green beryl is is a semi-precious gemstone you can get jewelry and and what have you with with barrels in them it's very pretty so here we had light malachite green and then over here we've got just malachite green and then this middle verdigris verdigris again is that that coating that you get on copper if you leave it outside. And then some more cobalts, cobalt green. Everybody's okay with that. I don't think there's too many more. Oh, here's that super fun word again. Dark thalocyanine green. So dark thalocyanine green. Uh, chromium oxide green. Those are probably okay words there too. And... I think that's about it. I'm looking at the the rest of the... Everybody knows ochres and sienas. Those are no problem. There's bismuth again. There's bismuth yellow. Indian yellow has a super interesting backstory, but we'll maybe save that for another day. Yeah, we've just got brown ochres, brown olives. The only other one, maybe two, and this isn't really, well, sort of a pronunciation thing, this here, that's an interesting name, Herculanum Red. That doesn't come from chemistry. It actually, I think, I could be wrong in this, I think it comes from um, archaeology. In 79 AD, the um, Vesuvius volcano erupted, right? And it covered up the city of Pompeii. And so I think most people are familiar with, you know, it got all covered in ash, and it preserved everything in that city really well. So, you know, when we, we start to excavate, we can see this amazing 2,000-year-old Roman city, you know, just perfectly preserved. Pompeii wasn't the only city that was preserved. There was another city, there's actually a number of areas around there that, again, were covered in ash, um, and Herculaneum was one of them. So some of the murals that they found when they've excavated Herculaneum had this really wonderful kind of, it was a red, but almost like a peachy red, but kind of brown in there. Too. It was just this really beautiful red color on these, uh, some of the, the color in some of these murals. So I think that's probably why Karen Dash called this Herculanum Red. I could be wrong though, but I think that's why. And the only other thing, this was interesting. This is, now, the pronunciation on this, I would say Cassell Earth. It could be Castle, but I would say Cassell Earth. And I think Cassell Earth is just another term for Van Dyke Brown. So this is Van Dyke Brown. It's just called Cassell Earth. So I'm going to remove this for a sec, just so I won't be flipping it and, and knocking the camera. And I'm using the swatch charts from 
color with Claire just because they're so pretty. Oh, sorry, crooked there. Hopefully the the focus is okay. I've got my camera fairly low just because then you can hopefully see the words. I think we're okay here. We've got some chromes, ochres, terracottas, uh, cadmiums, pale geranium lake. I think everybody's okay there. Carmines. Pompeian red, but I think everybody would be okay with that. Let's slide this over. So here we've got alizarin again, alizarin crimson, just as a, a reminder how to say that. We've got kaput mortum. There's an interesting backstory there too about what that is. Just looking here. Slide this over again, hoping I'm not making anyone too sick. So here we've got helio blue reddish. That's how you would say that. And on Karen Dash, we had Inden Throne, and this is Inden Threen. So very similar, game related. So very similar pronunciation, but that's how you would say that. And you'll notice on Polychromos, instead of thalocyanine, they've just got thalo. So here we've got light thalo green. And then we've got light phthalo blue. Again, you kind of make that F sound, but not quite. So phthalo, phthalo green there. And lots of people just forget about the PH altogether and just call it phthalo, which is fine too. Just trying to see if there's anything else here. I think everything else is pretty, pretty common. Or, or words that are not quite so intimidating to say. Yeah, we've got chromium green opaque. Chromium is fine. Some more cadmiums there. So I think that that is it. So I will just zoom out here. Give you the whole, here's polychromos, my favorite, oh, sorry. Favorite pencil set. Love working with polychromos. And there you go. So hopefully this wasn't too, I know probably it wasn't the most exciting video in the world, but it certainly, I hope, gave you some confidence in saying some of those words. And plus, they're just fun to say. Thalocyanine, that's just fun. All right, thanks for sticking with. I hope everyone is well. I hope you're safe. And I hope you're enjoying your coloring. Till next time, bye.